Hey guys, so I am Raya from Ryan's Tie-Dye and we're going to jump right into it. So I have a 30 inch by 45 inch tapestry here. If you don't have anything like this, I have links in the description box down below for everything that I use in my videos. Uh, so this isn't my normal 5x5, but we're going to be doing a snowflake mandala. It's just going to be a random mandala, but the color placement will determine whether it looks like a snowflake or not. So that's what we're going to go with on this one. So while I'm tying this, if you're new here, I'm glad you're here. Welcome. Um, and it's been crazy lately, but besides that, we're going to fold this in half. <laughs> and if you haven't subscribed yet, you should do that right now so every time we post a video hit that notification bell and you'll get notified so you have this folded in half excuse my rambling uh, then you're going to smooth out your wrinkles which was pretty easy for this one and then fold it in half again if you need to know how to be, how to find the center of your mandala i actually show you really well in a video that I recently did, you can click the card up in the top right hand corner. Not that way, this way. Right here, somewhere. There should be a card there uh, for the video. And if you get to the part where I have folded the tapestry in half, it'll show you how to find the center of your mandala. In this case, mine is right here. And we're going to fold this side up flatten it out make sure that you don't have any big wrinkles in there we're going to fold it up one more time flatten it out and then we're going to grab all of this fabric hold it really tight flip it over and then do the same thing with this side so you're going to fold it up flatten it out and then fold it up again and flatten it out so for a snowflake, it's going to be super random because no snowflakes are ever the same. So it doesn't really matter what you draw on your tapestry. You can literally do whatever you want, but when you put the dye on, wherever you put your sinew, you're going to want to try to keep that white and then do blues around it or whatever color gray. But blue kind of gives it the snowflakey feel, if you know what I mean. So for the middle of our tapestry. I want to kind of do a big center. So I want maybe the little tiny middle to be blue. So it looks like you can see through it. And then this part, I'm going to have a big white area. So I'm going to just do one of these lines. So what I'm hoping for is this will be a blue color. This I will keep white here. So we're going for a lot of white in this one. Uh, so I'm going to actually go up one more, kind of make it steep. And this is where you can really get creative and make whatever you want. So let's say we're going to make, uh, let's do a teardrop somewhere. This is thick, but it's going to be an eight point. So you just want to make sure you're not drawing designs that you're not going to be able to fold because that'll be really hard to do. So I'm going to do right here. I'm going to come up and do a teardrop. And on this side, I'm going to actually fill that in a little bit just by putting one more. You can tell I'm kind of winging this, but it's a snowflake, so we're just going to make it look super cool. So we got our teardrop, and then we have a little area right here that still has some fabric in it. So if you want the design on all sides of it, you would want to do it right here where all of the fabric stops before that. So I'm going to actually do a curve all the way up. And then I'm going to go straight straight across here. Now, if this ends, if you start tying this and it ends up not working somehow, you can always read, 
untie it and then flip this over and start on this side again too. I've done that plenty of times, so that's definitely okay. This is washable marker, like I said, so it'll wash out if you mess up anyways. So you can go rewash it, put it in soda ash, and then redraw whatever you want. And then the rest of this, we can just make blue or you can put design in it if you want to, but I'm gonna leave it for scrunching. So now we have our sinew that should be in the links down below also. And we're gonna make a little slip knot and start tying it up. The sinew compared to the last sinew I had, you know, if you've been here long enough, you know I had like a lighter color. This one's really sticky. So I don't think this one is the best, but the last one I had was really good. This is not the one from the links down below, however. I haven't put that one down in there yet, but I'd like the other one better. So you're gonna wrap your slip knot around your line, hold it down and pull it until it kind of holds it there for you. Get your slack out of there, hold it down and pull. And then once this starts coming back through, you wrap this around a couple of times to get it nice and tight. It'll help create those white lines that we all love and then you'll cut this end off short because that's not the one you're going to want to look for when you untie it and then leave a little bit of room so you know that this is the one you want to pull so then we're going to have a couple of diff separate sinew ties here do it again this time we can sort of do like a bigger sized pleat fold. So you can take this, just make sure your lines are matching up and you don't have any weird wrinkle folds in there that shouldn't be there, I should say. And just like that, it's all lined up, the markers lined up. Put that on, get that lined up so that you can pull it. and then you can do it again let get your slack out of there and pull it wrap it around I say like three times is my magic number you can always do more I think any less than that would be not as white as you wanted it to be and then we're gonna keep going with this one for the next two so we will sort of do a bigger pleat fold and my sinews are already kind of in the spot that I want it to be so I will wrap that around three times before pulling because it's already tight so then put your hand down on top and pull it as tight as you can and then we're gonna do it again, one more time. Wrap it around, one, three, pull it. All right, and cut this one. Don't need that. Then we'll do our teardrop. So for the teardrop, you can start at the top or the bottom. That's up to you, whichever one you think is going to be easiest. I'm going to try the top first because you're just kind of doing a pleat fold, matching up your marker lines all the way around. So you're going to have to definitely move it around with you. And there we go. So there is the teardrop. We're going to put this on there just like we did the rest of them. And pull. And then wrap that around probably more because it is a lot thicker. So I will probably do 
three, four, we'll do four. Pull it, they're really tight, so it's super tight. And now that you have seen me tie all of that, I'm gonna do this real quick and we'll scrunch it. All right, guys, now, depending on how tight you really want the scrunched part, you can use rubber bands or you can use kite string. Uh, I do like mine tight because I kind of like the marble effect. It's not really a marble effect, I guess I should say. You'll definitely have more white in there, but the color, whatever color you use, will kind of blend with the white at the same time. So there will be white and there will be the color that you picked, like in an even amount. And I kind of like that, unless you kind of bunch it up way too much and then you'll have more white in some areas than others. So with this, I have this on a homemade dowel. It's nothing special. It's just a cheap dowel that I picked up from Walmart and I had my husband make me or cut it for me so that it was shorter. It's actually super long regularly. And we're just gonna pull Put it under, wrap it under, pull some more. And you just do that randomly until you have it the way that you want it to be. So it doesn't have to be super tight. If you just keep press it on it, you can still keep it flat as you work with it. And then this line here, I left out so that we can tie this off. So I'm gonna wrap this way one more time and cut it. So I didn't tie it at all yet, and now I'm gonna tie it. So I'm gonna find the original and the last one and tie it in a double knot so that it's gonna stay while we dye it. So now this is all tied up. We're gonna talk about color placement when we come back to dye this, but we're gonna let this dry overnight, maybe for a whole day. And then we're gonna pick some blue colors and make a snowflake. So we'll be back for the dyeing. All right, you guys. So here is our snowflake mandala and we uh, had let this sit for 24 hours to kind of dry it out. The center is probably a little damp still, but that's okay. Uh, all we're doing, the reason why we do that is to uh, sort of help prevent it from bleeding too much. So today we are using baby blue and seashell blue from Grateful Dyes. And we're gonna have a lot of white in this. So basically, if you've seen my rainbow mandala, we're gonna kind of follow the lines on this one again. This will be all blue and we'll go through and do that. So obviously the snowflake's not really gonna be connected, but it is a snowflake mandala, so it's gonna look really cool and very wintry. So let's get started. All right, you guys, so just a reminder with this dye I mixed, uh, I followed the instructions, plus I added some urea to this. Uh, so that will help keep the dye moist if you let this sit out on a tray or if you don't put it in a bag, which obviously I wouldn't recommend because we're trying to keep some of the white white in here. So this is gonna sit for 24 hours, then we're gonna rinse it in cold water first 
to rinse the soda ash and then warm up the water a little bit to help rinse the dye out. And then once your water runs clear, we can open this bad boy up. You're gonna wash it under a hot setting with cold rinses if your washer has that. And I use Synthropol. You can, <clears throat> you can use any detergent that you want, but Synthropol will help uh, draw the dyes out of your fabric. So I do recommend that. And then we'll be back for the reveal. Hey guys, so we're back for a reveal and we're going to try to open up the snowflake tapestry. So it did bleed quite a bit, so it must have been a little more damp in the middle than it normally is. But we're going to dive right into this. And because we kind of want that white to stay more white than blue, we are going to, I'm actually going to put this in my bathtub with like warmish hot water and Dawn dish soap because it'll help keep the white whiter and not take up all the blue dye. So that is definitely a fun trick to keep your whites white. Dawn is the best for that. The sinew does work pretty good, but it's not my favorite. The last one kind that I used was definitely my favorite. And I, by the way, I hope everybody has a Merry Christmas. I hope you're being safe. I cannot wait. I'm doing some last minute shopping. And hoping this turns out really cool. One more. So you, if you remember, I don't know, maybe you use different colors than me. I use seashell blue and baby blue from Grateful Dyes for this. So you can see a little bit of both. Like there's the baby blue, there's the seashell on the side. I'm having a little bit of trouble with this one because I normally always do. Okay, so we're going to open this bad boy up. Ready? Oh, you guys, that looks so awesome. You guys, I was not expecting that at all. I actually was really nervous about this one because it bled so much, but I am super duper 